You know, folks often ask me, which 300 Magnum should I get? The good old 300 Win Mag or the 300 WSM? And the answer I give them is yes. <laughs> and for a full explanation of what I mean by that, stay tuned to this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Hey, before I get into the 300 WSM, I want to apologize for not having done any cartridge reviews for some time now. It's fall, it's hunting season. My wife and I are busy getting the garden in and all the firewood done for the year. So yeah. I apologize. I'll get a few done this week and then I'm going to go hunting all next week too. So let's get this one covered. The 300 Winchester Magnum versus the 300 WSM. Man, a lot of people wonder which one. And the reason I tell them yes is because they're ballistic twins. Yeah, I mean, one will go as fast as the next and they throw the same bullets, 308 diameter, same weights. I really can't come up with a reason that the 300 short Magnum is different from the performance of the standard length 300 wind mag that's been around since, well, 1961. Let's do a little bit of history on these cartridges. But before we do, I do want to thank all of our patrons for supporting us. Uh, if you'd like to help out and join the Ron Spomer Outdoors community, go to patreon.com and Ron Spomer Outdoors. We'd be uh, really pleased to have you. Thanks for the support. Also subscribe to the channel. That helps us out too. Now, history on these cartridges. The, uh, Win Mag came out in the early 1960s, 1963, and that was a, a historic turmoil period. John F. Kennedy was assassinated, and the civil rights movement was just getting underway, and Beatlemania had landed. This was changing the music scene. I want to hold your hand. All that stuff was happening. And in 2001, when the WSM cartridge came out, there was a lot of bad stuff going on then, too. Talk about turmoil. 911. Twin Towers. It was a horrible time too. George Bush was the president and the Afghan war started and that just ended now. So these cartridges appear and they really can't tell you what's going to happen in the same year that they show up, but it's kind of fun to know what was going on in those times that just sort of ties the development of those cartridges to, to history. But cartridges are for uh, shooting pleasure and hunting and we're going to concentrate on the good stuff, not the bad stuff. Now, what are the big obvious differences between the WSM and the 300? Well, length is certainly the big one. This guy is a standard length, 30 out 6, and you got to shoot it in longer rifles. You knock a half inch off by going down to that WSM. That means you're going to get a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter rifle, and a lot of folks like the shorter bolt runs. So if that appeals to you, that will help you make up your mind. Um, the uh, 300 Win Mag, of course, is a world standard. Everybody loads for it and lots and lots of options. It's been around forever and it's probably going to stay around forever. But of all the short magnums that have come out in the last 20 years, I think this 300 WSM is the one that's going to last. I think it's going to stick it out for the long haul. Now, some of the other WSMs or other short fat magnums, like this guy, the Remington version, your short action ultra magnum, that one lost out fairly quickly. And the 270 WSM is not as, as uh, popular. The 7 millimeter WSM is really not popular. The 325, I think, is the most efficient of the whole line, and that should stick around. But again, those oddball sizes never really seem to take off. People just don't really appreciate much larger than, say, a 30 caliber. And once they go above that, they figure they might as well get a 416 or a 375 and head for Africa. But, don't worry about that 300 WSM disappearing. That is being supported widely. Almost everyone loads for it now, and they're still building rifles for it. So if you're looking for a short 30, this is one to consider. Now, let's look at some of the numbers on these things. The case lengths, we already mentioned, you know, it's a half inch of difference. So this guy's coming in at that 30 at 6 length. This one's more like the 308 Winchester. Standard short action stuff. It's the uh, diameters that are really different. You know, this is the standard built on that 300 H&H &H Magnum. That's what Winchester took off from parent cartridge, right? And that, of course, came from the 375 H&H. &H. But this 300 WSM didn't have a parent case. 
I always thought it was probably that 404 Jeffrey. That's the fat one they always use to make these. But you look at the dimensions in this is not matching up with that 404 Jeffrey. The uh, rim diameter is larger. It's at point, um, point 0.5, I wrote it down here, 3.5, 0.535, and the body diameter is 0.555. And that's where this guy gets a lot of its extra horsepower. It's getting its room from the expansion this way instead of this way. And one of the complaints against the old wind mag is that belt. You've got a pretty wide little space on that belt, but once you step down to the actual body size, you're down to 0.513, and you don't have as much, so you make your volume up by going longer. Whether you like short or long, really, it doesn't make much difference as far as the performance, which we're going to see when we look at our ballistic tables here real quick. Before we do that, though, I want to bring up one of my recommended books. You know, I often recommend some classics. This is not a classic. It's not even written by a real writer. This is just a gentleman, an ordinary guy like you and me, who suffered a tragedy early in his life. He was an outdoorsman. He was a trapper and a hunter. He and his dad were out in the woods all the time. And at the age of 19, he broke his neck in a swimming diving accident. So often happens. And the poor guy is a quadriplegic. He gained enough movement and control of his left hand that he was able to shoot. So his dad helped him out and they went hunting and he's been doing it ever since. I think he's in his 60s now. This is his life story. If you're looking for some encouragement and an uplifting story on per persevering against the odds, you might want to check something like this out. I don't know where you would get it other than from him. His name is Carl Schmidt and it's cleverly titled Sticking to My Guns. So even though he's in a wheelchair all these years, he continues to shoot and uh, experiment with cartridges and guns and do a lot of hunting. So it's kind of an uplifting story. You might want to check it out. Now, let's get into some of the capacities for powder in these two cartridges. Why would they be similar and or different? Does that fat cartridge case make up for the shorter length? Not quite. The water capacity on this guy is 70.5 grains. And the big one is 83.2. So that would suggest that you're going to get a lot more velocity out of this one, pushing the same bullets, but it doesn't happen. There's only about 50 feet per second advantage in the longer wind mag over the WSM, which kind of surprised me. So I think what we might be dealing with is the so-called efficiency. I don't know exactly what everybody means when they say a cartridge is efficient, but to me it means that it probably produces maximum velocity with a minimum powder supply. And how they do that probably has to do with the powder uh, ignition source, the primer, being closer to the center of the powder column than on this longer one. That supposedly starts the burning and it evenly burns out from there. I don't fully understand how it works, but apparently it does because it's all the rage these days in cartridge design is to keep them a little bit fatter and shorter and get that burn closer to the center. You know, back in the old days, there was some experimenting going on with tubes running up into the powder supply from the primer so that the powder flashed actually burned at the front and then burnt back down. So there's all sorts of crazy things going on out there. But this one really seems to work. And you can see it when we load these guys up with the same powder. I looked at some loads in the Osler Reloading Hand Loading Manual, and there were um, the same powder being used to push a 190 grain bullet. I don't have that bullet here, but it's the Acubond Long Range, a high ballistics coefficient. And we're going to look at our ballistic tables using that bullet. So to do it, they used a Norma MPR powder, and they got 68 grains in this case and 77 grains in the wind mag. And again, you would think, well, almost 10 grains more powder, you're probably going to be going a lot faster. And only 50 feet per second. And actually, it was 48 feet per second in difference. Now, to get that, they had to compress the powder on both of these. So this WSM with that load had... 106% of capacity, which means they use the bullet to compress the powder. You can do that to a degree. The, and the WSM even compressed it a little bit. It was at 102% of capacity. So we've got our top loads here, no doubt about it. Both of them from 24-inch barrels, by the way. So you recoil before we get to the, the trajectory charts and looking at those numbers. I want to talk about the recoil because there is a slight 
a slight difference. I don't know if it's enough to make up for anybody's minds on this one, but you get a little bit less out of the WSM because it's less powder. Recoil is a product of the ejecta coming out and the velocity. So if you have 10 grains more powder in the big guy, you're going to get a little bit more recoil. And also you're getting more velocity and that contributes to more recoil. So here's what the difference is. It's not much. 33 foot pounds of recoil out of this guy, 37 out of the big one. And that's with that same 190 grain bullet. And the velocity of that recoil is not much different. Just one foot per second difference. 16.3 on the shorty, 17.3 on the tall guy. So those are the differences there. Now, here's the downrange stuff, the ballistics performance. The WSM is going to be dropping 2.6 inches at 300 yards. And the wind mag is only 2.3. Whoopie ding, a third of an inch difference out to 300 yards. I mean, that's what most of us keep our shots inside of when we're hunting. That's why I say these two are just ballistic twins. Now, the deflection of the bullet from a 10 mile an hour right angle wind, boy, that's awfully close to 4.3 inches with the shorty, 4.5 with the wind mag. Who knows? You're not even going to notice the difference on that one. And the energies aren't that far off either. 2,748 foot pounds of energy from the WSM. 2,842 with the wind mag. I don't think any elk's going to know the difference. But that's 300 yards. What's going to happen at 600 yards, a range at which I have never shot an animal? <laughs> you got 52 inches of drop with the WSM and 50. Big deal. Two inches difference. If anybody can tell me that they can change their aim to cover two inches each time at that range, they're blowing smoke. <laughs> There's just too many other variables going on out there. So I don't really think you're going to notice that difference either. And the wind deflection is only a half inch. 20 inches of wind deflection with the WSM and only 19.6 with the uh, big 300. So once again, they're just about twins. The energy, 1919 foot pounds with the WSM and 1990 with the wind mag. Again, nobody's going to notice that difference. And if you want to do some long range plate shooting and different things, yeah, you might then have an advantage with the bigger 300 here, just because it's a little bit less drop. But even out there at a thousand, look at the difference in the wind deflection. 63 inches deflected on the WSM, 61 and a half on the wind mag. Big deal. But energies are right close there to 1138 and 1184. But you do get about 10 inches more drop, eight inches or so of drop out of the shorter ones. So if you're worried at all about a little more drop at a thousand, there's your difference. But again, I don't think any of those numbers would convince me to pick one or the other. So when people say, should I get the WSM version or the 300 version? What does it come down to? I think it has to be length and the rifle that you're going to be shooting. Do you want a long action or a standard action, the 30 out six length? Or do you want that quicker, shorter, half inch, whoopie D, <laughs> half inch shorter WSM? Think of it as the same as going from a 30 out six to a 308. That's really the difference. They're the, the short action version. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably a pretty good comparison. Yeah, there's about the same difference between those. So I think what you really want to consider though, in a new rifle, in a 300, if you're looking for a good 300, is some of the newer ones coming out. And here is one of them. This is the 300 Ruger, Ruger Compact Magnum. And look at those two. They are so close in size, obviously both short actions. And I think, yeah, it looks like that 300 WSM is a little bit wider. So you're probably going to get more horsepower out of that. But that Ruger is worth considering, and we will do that someday. But here's the real big news. PRC, 300 PRC. Well, that's a lot different than this WSM, but when you slide it up against the old 300, that doesn't look like there's a lot of difference there, does it? Well, except for one thing, that bullet. That's what's changing in this day and age is those longer high BC bullets where you get efficiency in the wind. You never know how that wind is going to blow your bullet because you can't predict the wind velocity. You can take readings with anemometers, but downrange, the wind could be different than it is where you are. 
Uh, and it could change suddenly, you know how wind goes, it gusts and then it stops and gusts and stops. And all of that makes it really difficult to put your bullets on target. And you get a longer bullet with a high BC, you can fight that pretty effectively. And I think that's why so many shooters these days are looking to those longer, sleeker bullets. There's your advantage in the PRC. It's put in rifles with fast enough twist to handle those really, truly long bullets. So, you know, in this country, in this wonderful country of ours where you've got choices, sometimes you have too many choices and it does get difficult. But just to narrow things down, the standard question between these two, WSM or Win Mag, those are the basics you want to consider. But when you start dragging all these other 300s in there, it can get real confusing really fast. So, uh, Welcome to the party, guys. None of this stuff seems to be easy because there are so many choices, but thank goodness we do have choices. So when you're making yours, do consider the length of those cartridges, the fatness of the cartridges. Oh, one more thing on the WSM. Some people report feeding issues with it. Now, I've never had any, and I've used this in any number of rifles over the years, but some people claim that that just does not ramp up with that sharp 35 degree shoulder. They don't ramp up quite as smoothly as something like, well, this guy, the 300 H&H. I mean, that is so sloped, that would slide into anything. So you might want to consider that. But again, I don't have any issues with it. It's always cycled for me. But I run a bolt pretty hard and that's the way you're supposed to. You don't want to be gr gradually sliding that cartridge up there. You want to slam it home. And then I don't think you'll have any problems. So those are the considerations, 300 WSM Win Mag. You're not going to go wrong with either one of them. Both of them are essentially classics at this stage of the game. One's just a little longer in the tooth than the other. Hey, this is Ron Spomer. Thanks for tuning in. Again, we appreciate the support. And until next time, hunt honest and shoot straight.